Hey, audio friends. This is CJ with Prodigy Creations wishing you a happy Fader Friday. And in honor of that, I'm going to be giving you a simple mixing tip on how you can achieve bigger sounding drums within your song. So I have my latest song pulled up here called This Abyss, and I'll make sure to link it down below in the video description if you're interested in hearing the full thing. And something that's cool about this song is that I actually recorded this song on a $50 budget, and I made a video on that process and how you can do it too. So definitely make sure to check that out if you haven't already. But with all that said, today I'm going to be talking about a method called parallel compression. Now, don't be too scared by the name because it's actually a really simple method. It's just got a fancy name. That's it. So if you read about parallel compression on good old Wikipedia, they'll explain it to you as being achieved by mixing an unprocessed, dry, or lightly compressed signal with a heavily compressed version of the same signal. So to put this in perspective, I obviously have a track for each of my drums. I have two different kicks going on here, a snare, hats, etc. And I've manipulated them individually in some way, whether it's through EQ, compression, or you know, just adjusting the individual volume faders of these tracks to get that balance. And I'm happy with the results I have, um, but now I just want to add a little bit more aggression to the overall drums. And by using parallel compression, I can achieve this really easily. So let me show you an A-B comparison of this song with and without parallel compression. So as you can see, by using this method, it really helped bring the drums out into focus and really added some punch to it and made the overall drums sound bigger. So how can we get started with this method? So the first thing you're going to want to do is create an independent aux track or a return track if you're using Ableton like I am or whatever it's called. could have a different name depending on which DAW you use. But basically, we're just wanting an independent channel that we can send other channels to, like this one. So we get this channel set up, we're gonna name it Drum Bus, and then we're gonna send all of our drum tracks to this aux track. So how you do this in Ableton at least is, uh, this is the D send. So we're just gonna go to this channel, all of our drum channels and crank, it, it would look like this, and we're just gonna crank it all the way up to send it to D. And you do that for all these other ones as well. And once we do this, we're going to add extreme compression to this aux. You heard me right, compress the snot out of this track. And we'll get more into why you would compress more heavily than usual here in a second. But right now I'm gonna show you two different ways on how you can do this. The first way I'm gonna show you is by how I did it here in this song, and that is by using the L1 limiter by Waves. I highly recommend this plugin if you're willing to spend a little bit of extra money. And I'll provide a link down below in the video description as well that will lead you to this plugin. But if you're not willing to spend extra money, don't go anywhere yet because we are going to get into the second way you can do this. And that is by using what you already have within your DAW. So stick around. So like I said, we're going for really extreme compression. And that's pretty much what a limiter is. So I decided to try out the L1 on my drums. And as you heard, it gave it some great punch to it. And so when we're getting started, obviously... This is all gonna be set to zero. Our fader will be back at zero. And then what I would do next is solo this aux channel. And then I'm just gonna play through it. And I'm just going to adjust the threshold. I'm gonna bring it down until my ears tell me that this is the sound I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and do that. So there we have it. Uh, maybe you're thinking, gosh, that sounds terrible. And yeah, this definitely would sound kind of trashy if it were our only drum track. Did you catch that? So referring back to the definition I read earlier, we're using this heavily compressed aux track to mix into the song that is playing parallel, or in other words, alongside with our other drum tracks. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna take it off solo and bring this fader all the way down. And then we're gonna play back the song and slowly bring up the fader until our ears tell us that it's mixed well within the song. So let's go ahead and do that. Looking at the window, 
hold my head above water in a such a fight They gave me everything to help get me So there you have it guys. That in my opinion would be the simplest way to getting bigger sounding drums using parallel compression. And this was quick adjustments that I made, you know, at the fly in the moment. And, you know, later on in the mixing phase, I may continue to adjust that to where I find its perfect place. But you always got to start from somewhere. Now, like I said, there is a second option and this can be achieved by using what you already have within your DAW. So no third party plugins are crucial to getting this done. It'll require a few extra steps, but nothing too crazy. So with this method, let me disable this L1. Uh, we're going to use our stock compressor within our DAW. We'll just drag it in here and switch to this view, take off the makeup gain. And again, let me set this fader back to zero. So more than likely your compressor probably comes preloaded with a pretty low ratio setting two to one, three to one, something like that. But remember we're wanting to go extreme with this. So let's just say, I don't know, 99 to one. And then I would maybe give it a little bit of a slower attack time. And from here, it's pretty much the same as using the L1. We're gonna solo it. We're going to adjust the threshold until our ears tell us that that's where it needs to be. So let's do that real quick. One other thing I would do from here is to make sure to level match the output to the input. And normally I would toggle the compressor on and off and then compare it to what it's showing here. But, but for the sake of time, I'm just gonna eyeball it here. Close enough. So then again, we're just gonna take it off solo, bring the fader all the way down, and then mix it into the song until our ears tell us that it's good. So there you have it guys. There is a great mixing tip for you on how you can get bigger sounding drums using parallel compression. Again, if you're interested in looking into the L1 limiter, I will provide a link down below in the video description that will lead you to it. And how about this? Let's continue the conversation. I want to hear from you. What are some ways that you achieve bigger sounding drums within your songs? Let me know down in the comment section. Let's continue this conversation. Let's continue to teach each other. That wraps it up for today, guys. This is CJ with Prodigy Creations, wishing you a happy Fader Friday and happy creating.